of the RSL show. I am the intern, Alex Nepolis. Today, just joined by Joshua Clark. No, Andy, he's over doing stuff. In doing Atlanta, whatever Andy does. In, in Atlanta. Um, but it'll just be us today. And so, Josh, how you doing, man? Good. How are you doing, buddy? Doing good. Doing good. We've got some cool stuff planned for the RSL show future. We've got some cool stuff planned for... I guess individuals future. We got cool stuff planned for Miami and we'll be, all be very excited to share that with you guys here soon. Just, just keep reeling you guys in with the, with these, with these drops. Yes. Yes. Announcements to come. <laughs> um, there's really only one like big, big announcement, but patience, it'll come, it'll come. So, you know, it'll be fun. There you go. No one's leaving. No, no one's leaving. So, yet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we'll leave it at that. That's your morsel today. There you go. Um, I haven't had enough, and I'll stick around for a little longer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's jump into it. The, not a lot of news to cover. Um, besides, yeah, this should be a, a brief one, I think. Yeah, yeah. We'll keep it short, quick, and simple. Um, just the two preseason matches for Real Salt Lake as they start their journey in the Atlantic Cup in Portugal. Um, started on Saturday against Bronby. They end up falling 2-1 to Bronby. Yeah, and a decent competitor, I think. I think that's a a One good the, team to to play in preseason, yes. right? It's, yeah. it's not Manchester United, but it's also not Phoenix Rising, right? Like, Yes. Not even Phoenix Rising, but some of those lower teams we've played in the past. I think the biggest thing for me is just the fact that they're going out to Europe and playing <laughs> European competition. Um, yep. it, it, it kind of, I feel like it just gets repetitive playing all these MLS teams in preseason. Mm-hmm. You um, see the same things. Yeah, exactly. Really exactly. And so I think it's fr- a, a nice, fresh, um, start for Real Salt Lake to just go out, play these European teams. And then Bronby is a good squad. They're, I think second place in, in the, um, Swedish or Danish league, which, whichever one. And RSL honestly didn't look too bad. No, and they were missing some key pieces as well. So, yeah, you know, Julio's goal was sick, right, from deep, picking the pocket of the goalkeeper. But, you know, again, we saw defensive issues, right? We didn't see the second goal. Did you end up seeing it anywhere? No. Yeah, no. so we don't know what happened with the second goal, but <laughs> that first goal was a lot of flashing back to 2023. For sure. So let's get that cleaned up. I think that needs to be the focus. It's... Obviously, you know, first game since the loss to Houston, there there's obviously rust there in, in some of those guys. But overall, they didn't play too bad of a game, especially against a good opponent. Um, especially, right. I think in that first maybe 20 minutes, Arsenal didn't look too bad. Uh, Bronby kind of grew into the game, got that lead before the half. And I think the first, like, 15 20 minutes of that second half, it was just all RSL controlling possession. And they didn't look too, they didn't look too shabby. For, for their first go about. Yeah, no, and then again, they looked confident. You know, they moved the ball well. Again, like we were just talking about, it was just the defensive errors, right? Silly mistakes. I do wish we knew what happened in the second goal. Um, I think it's fair to assume that it wasn't pretty. But I, I think it's, yeah. Yeah. I think it's I'm not mad at the result. I'm not mad at it, right? But it is concerning that we're seeing some of the same things. RSL trying to build out of the back. Um, Justin Glad just accidentally gives the ball away right at the top of the 18. Yep, Bronby's, in on, Bronby's in on goal, um, and they level it through that. It's, yeah, which, which killed our confidence, right? It was just like last year. We would we would be doing well, give up a silly goal, confidence killed. It's, and it's, it's like and it sucks cycle. that it's from it sucks that it's from Justin. Right, the guy that didn't <laughs> that needed to. <laughs> You know, you know, uh, take a step forward in the confidence department. So the he, the guy that we're relying on a lot in defense this year, um, the guy that we really need mm-hmm. to 
basically anchor that back line and he he commits a mistake that we we saw a lot towards the end of the season last year obviously like i said still first preseason match still plenty of time to clean it up but that does concern me that we are still susceptible to making those kinds of mistakes building out of the back yep and you know is that going to be a tactical adjustment is that a personnel adjustment i mean time will tell yeah right now we have coaches focusing on it so We'll see another, what they can do. another defensive giveaway led to Arsenal's opening goal. Um, yes. Because the center back was playing it out of the back t- towards the middle of the field a little bit. And Julio just runs up, steals it from almost almost like the Sporting Kansas goal. Yep. I, don't know if, I don't know if you remember that. I do. A little bit like that, but he just absolutely rifles it from about a half court. And it ends up in the back of the net. I love to see Anderson Julio doing that already mm-hmm. because I think we're going to re- need to rely on him a lot, especially off the bench this season. Absolutely. Right. Right now it's Chicho and whoever wants it. And right now Julio showing he wants it. He's got two goals in the preseason. Uh, he's looking fit. He's looking fast. Right. Again, it's Julio. Let's hope that continues without, you know, a hamstring jumping out and attacking him. But Not you know, I, we are seeing a lot of high press out of RSL already this preseason. And that bodes well for Anderson Julio. For the game that we for the game that we were able to see, unfortunately, we'll get and we'll get to the second game too, but unfortunately we weren't able to see that one due to the streaming stuff. Um, but from the game that we were able to see, we got a nice little sample size of Fidel Barajas yes. the new signing for, for RSL. I loved I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed yeah, he it as a part. He as a part. 17 year old, he looked fantastic for Real Salt Lake in that one. Him and Luna were already con- making some good passes, and um, he had a shot that I didn't think he would take, but he took it, and he got a good result out of it. Uh, unfortunately, keeper saved it, but it was a good look for for Fidel. Yeah, he he forced the save right, which is what yeah. you want your strikers to do. Um, yeah, man, if we can really find a 10 for them to combine with, we could could have something special going on up top. I'm excited to see them link up with Chicho too, because there were a few balls that were played in that were like what Chicho's looking for. Exactly. What Julio doesn't normally score. So there you know. was there was a couple passes from Fidel and maybe I think two from Luna that I was like, man, if Chicho was in there. Yep, that's his that's his bread and butter. Him exactly. and Demir, right? That would have been a Demir ball back in the Demir days. So yeah, just just a well placed, well timed ball into the box that any kind of poaching kind of striker or, you know, header specialist is going to salivate all over. Fidel's looking good. Luna, I thought, had a good shift. Um, obviously, he played with the uh, U- U.S. team not too long ago, so he's he's a little bit more fit and ready to go for those matches. But regardless, both of them looked very good, and it just makes me excited for, for the young talent that this team has. We talked a l- about it a lot last episode. Um and that just made me – that just kind of did it for me, you know? Yeah. You know who else looked really good uh, was Anelli in the midfield. Yes. I know we saw glimpses of it last year, but, you know, he's he's looking great as a rotation piece in there. And then obviously back line coverage, but I think he could be poised for a big year, you know, barring any kind of soft, you know, sophomore slump or injury. An interesting decision <clears throat> by, by the lineup, um, Eric Holt at that right back, quote unquote, right back position. Yeah. We're totally looking at a three in the back type type lineup, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. I think we're going to see a lot of three in the back, especially with, you know, Holt being available. Uh, Vera can play on the left side of a three, you know, a three back. We have Marcelo, like it, it's doable. Um, Holt scares me there. Right. And we've, we've seen him there at, during some of the preseason trainings we've been to. And then again in, you know, the preseason game. But during those preseason trainings, they were really trying to drill into Eric Holt, like what he needs to be doing in that spot. So, yeah, be prepared to see see that this year. I And I like – Pablo did also mention it a little bit in the postgame presser that when when they go forward, they want to they wanna have like a little bit of a three in the back. Um, and then when they defend, it almost turns into a five in the back. Um, yeah, because your left or right back will fall in, exactly, or your CDM mm-hmm. or whoever's playing in the center of the midfield, or right and left back. I mean, it, it's a variation, right, of how we were attacking, but which I like, but at the same time, it also 
uh, I like it, but it concerns me at the same time because I feel like center back is where we really lack depth. Yeah, it's it's high risk but high reward. Yeah, it gives you more in the attack, but you know if your center backs aren't confident, they're kind of on an island, um, and they have to be ready. Right with Justin, we have the speed, but with Holt on the outside, he's more of a, a central guy like a bruiser, mm-hmm. so he's going to get torched potentially on the outside. Uh, Vera can hold his own, but if if it's Marcelo, right two pretty weak spots, Uh, but they have to be mistake free. And I think it also opens up a lot of uh, quick counter breakaway type situations. And that's what scares me, right? That leads to easy goals or red cards and neither of those things we like. So (laughs) Um, I think someone that I would like to see almost take on that role a little bit this season is maybe a Mecca time for him in the midfield is, going to be obviously you know not barring any injuries not barring anything like that um time for him in the midfield might be a little bit hard to find considering palacio Mm -hmm. ruiz and ojeda are kind of um in that depth room with him so maybe throw mecca in that position and have him kind of go do that slide back in go out wide type role that holt did a little bit on saturday because i think he'd be very successful successful there yeah, but he could also play like on the left side of the because I mean really the back three you're still going to have outside backs involved. Yeah. Um. So he could also find time in the Brody filling the Brody spot or the Oviedo spot, which I, I think, think he'd be more dangerous with. So. I think defense is still probably my my biggest concern. Oh, it's that and striker depth. Striker, That's striker, really... striker depth. I think once. If Julio continues it, um, continues what he's doing, you know, we still haven't really seen Elijah Paul um, again because the second game wasn't streamed. Um, Matthew Bell can still be signed. So we'll have options. It's just more, I feel like there's a little bit less options when it comes to defense, you know? I mean, I I disagree in ways, right? Mm -hmm. Because the step down after Chicho is fairly large. Whereas, like, the the step down in the center back, right? Glad Vera, your probable starters. Silva's still pretty good, right? Yeah. He would still be, like, a, a decent backup, right? Whereas you just don't know what you're getting with Julio or Paul, right? It's it's a bigger step down, in my opinion, wow, from a crazy. Chicho, right? In the past, yeah. when it was, you know, just Dami at the nine, where he doesn't even play, right? That step down just seems more even and just like less impressive in that aspect. But yeah, I think now having a DP striker, the backup there concerns me because you don't want to lose Chicho production if there's an injury or a national duty or something. Yeah, for sure. Um, that was moving. a long rant. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, like no, no, you're good. You're good. <laughs> it makes sense though. It, it, it does make sense because like, even when Demir would sub on, I feel like the fan base and us included, we would still be confident that we could get something out of Demir. He could nick a goal. You just exactly. don't know what you're getting out of the other guys. Yeah. And Julio's had his hamstring issues. We just talked about it. Um, mm-hmm. Elijah Paul, his sample size last season, I don't think was large enough for, for me to no. even kind of assess. But, you, with Paul. but you're not even expecting like Rubin numbers out of him, right? Yeah. And, the and that's numbers- not a lot. Yeah, <laughs> he could blow us away. He could pull off like a weird Devin Sandoval year, but like he's just so unproven. We don't know if he's going to go on to be the next Bobby Wood or if he's going to go on to be the next Devin Sandoval or Pablo Campos or Corbett. whoever. <laughs> also, uh, side note, uh, hangry, hangry hippo. This is totally off the rails, but he uh, DM me and let me know that Sergio Cordova has already been loaned out of Turkey. Yes. And is now playing in Russia. Yes. Unbelievable, my guy. I think that's his, what, fourth team in two years? Fourth or fifth, yeah. I mean, he's he's moving. I think uh, he had a – he had a an, uh, I don't know if I want to say like – I don't know if attitude is the right word, but he definitely he had, had a poor attitude. Yeah. Let's be real. Yeah. I uh, the, the last practice last year before the playoff game, the away game, it was right around there. <clears throat> One of my good buddies brought his boys to the practice, right? Mm-hmm. They're little. They're pumped to see the players. They're ecstatic. They have a ball they would love signed, right? 
They stood on top of the stairs at the zebra as they were leaving. Every single player stopped and signed that ball and said, said hi to those kids, right? There was no one else there except Cordova. Ruiz actually gra- went and grabbed Cordova, made him come back and sign it because he was like, what are you doing? Oh, really? This little kid, yeah. So was it a playoff? It was either a playoff game or the last home game. But either yeah. way, it was like one of the last practices out of the zebra that Cordova was here for. But yeah, the only guy that didn't want to stop and like – sign a little kid's ball. Interesting. I didn't know that. Yeah. So obviously there's attitude issues there. There's something there, right? Yeah. So the t- talent, I think <laughs> talent could be there. I think if you had a better attitude. Yep. And, and uh, yeah, the it's AT- a guy that's just getting in his own way. Yeah, for sure. So, um, I think- Sorry, that was a weird tangent, but I just <laughs> thought of it and had to bring it up. I think bottom consensus, though, at, between us, um, is that we like what we saw on Saturday. Yeah, absolutely, it wasn't an alarming an alarming loss to a USL one team in Castle Grande, right? Northern Colorado. <laughs> <laughs> um, I hate that we couldn't see the second game, but from what it sounds like, is a lot of the younger guys that will most likely be playing Monarchs. Yep. Played most of the game. Um, a lot, a, a name that keeps getting thrown out there by coaching staff and by by some of the players. Um, I don't remember his last name. First name Aiden, and a lot of the every like almost everybody has been super impressed um, yep. with the young guy, uh, Aiden. And apparently he's getting four point So congrats, <laughs> dude. No, like really. That was like the big thing uh, uh, Trey was talking about it. Is that like they gave him, him and another kid got 4.0s in the team. Like first team and everyone gave him a jersey with like 4.0 on the back. And oh, like really? celebrated him. And then <laughs> I can't remember who's out hurt, but someone had to drop out of Portugal and uh, they, they brought him in his place. So last minute, very cool. Interesting. Yep. And apparently he's impressing. Hey, apparently, dude, this, pro- this is how you get in sometimes, you know? Exactly. You go in there, make some noise. They they have to. Um, they'll probably send with the monarchs if anything, and see what he's got. I love it. I think, sec- I think second game, Aiden impressed. Um, obviously, everybody always talks about Xavier Gold, so he impressed. Oh, he he needs minutes this year, and he needs minutes badly. And like we said last time, they're they're there for the taking. Yep. I and think you can, can beat out Michael Cheng now. Yeah. Right? I think he can easily jump over Ch- Chang. I think if they want to play him more at the more at the striker position, he can easily jump Elijah Paul again, just due to what we've seen. Yep. Um, he's one. He's he's a guy that this whole organization is just super super stoked about, and I'm stoked about him too. Yeah, I man, the 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 two the scrimmage and then the the preseason game, and then even what we saw out of him last year, the yeah. kid is good. He needs minutes. ASAP. Another another player that made there that had some time on the field was Pablo Ruiz. He yes. played a, co- played a so couple of minutes. Him back? Honestly, I thought he wasn't going to be like due to the injury. I didn't think he was going to be ready until like maybe April. Nah, but the fact that a, the fact he's that he's already on the field and and playing and getting minutes and and in court getting incorporated back that makes me so happy. Yes, sir. It makes me so you know, happy. It's, it's wild to think how long he's been here. A yeah, been here a minute. And B, man, when he was playing, when he was forced to play left back, like no one would have cared if he got traded, right? And I'm sure on this show we were like, we can let him go. <laughs> and now look at him, right? Like, oh, a absolutely, solid important piece of the midfield of the team, really. And talking, I talked, I had the opportunity to talk to Chicha today. That video is over on YouTube. Um, go check it I out. Asked, I asked him about. Ruiz and and just kind of what he means to the like what he means to to Chicho and and Chicho had nothing but praise and he said look you guys saw it on the field last season how much the team changes with him not on the field um and he said the same thing he's a warrior he's a trooper and he's super super excited to be back on the field with Pablo Ruiz and that's high praise from Chicho right like you want yeah. Chicho going we missed him yep you want Chicho going I'm excited to play with him again so that's high praise high praise Pablo Ruiz made it back onto the field. Um, Chicho made it back on the field. He got a couple of minutes in that run against um, Frederick Sten. 
Steiner, whatever they're called. Yeah, say that. <laughs> um, and then we also got a debut from Alex Katranis, who also played a couple of minutes. And again, sucks that we couldn't see any of that. Yep. I wish we could say uh, he played well, right? But <laughs> I don't know. So, and you know, three in the back makes a lot of sense with Katranis's kind of profile as well. Because he's, I mean, he can do okay bombing forward and like putting a ball in, but I feel like he's more of a, a defender, as weird as that says, talking about defenders, but yes. No, yes, and he's not and, a wing back, he's a back. And that's also what he said today. Um, he, he talked about how he doesn't like to get beat. He wants to right. win his defensive duels. He's he he kind of made himself sound like a little bit of a of an enforcer of a tank almost in the back. Um, Which we need right. We need a yeah, we have absolutely. a Vera. We absolutely have a Vera, but we've we've always had a defender do it and a midfielder do it. So we've always had two. Mm-hmm. So we might have three or four this year, <laughs> which is excellent. And I asked him a little bit about what like what he wants to work on, and he he talked about how he wants to improve going forward, joining the attack. And so it, it, it does sound like it, it, it does sound like he's going to come in and be a really good addition to this team. Yes. Um, I, he's already, I have no doubt. Right. It's he's already got a good game. shoulder, um, good head on his shoulders. He's already talking about how he wants to go out and, and make these tackles and, and be an enforcer. And he, one of the things that I like that he said is that he doesn't like to lose. He wants to go out there and he wants to win and he's going to do everything he can to, to make sure that the team walks out with the win. And I like, yeah. And like, obviously that should be like assumed, I guess. Yeah. But not everyone has that mentality. It's, it's a little more than just saying it, right? Mm -hmm. He's probably a guy that if he gets beat or cause he's a goal or loses, it's probably going to affect him for a few days. Probably. Yeah. Because I asked him, I asked him to like, what's like the, a word to describe his, his characteristics. And he just had fire. He's going to bring okay. a fire. He's going to bring a fire to the team. And I, Listen, I, was, <laughs> I also like that answer. Listen, I'm ready to see this Alex Katranis. So uh, don't, I'm, don't I'm let us down. We need I'm to, I, I would like to talk to him on the show. We should, uh, yeah, we should hit them up when they when they get back to the U.S. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So we got Sweet. a couple of debuts in that second one. Arsenal wins it one nothing thanks to an Anderson Julio penalty, and that's pretty much kind oh, of the updates of uh, preseason so far. Yeah, that's uh, it's been fun, right? I think there's one more game in Portugal. Yes. And they'll come home. They'll be in L.A. area. Play Toronto. And Columbus and then some split squad type things. And then uh, they'll be back in Salt Lake. So the season is upon us. We're what, a week and a half away, two weeks from it starting? Two weeks from Miami. That's unbelievable. That it's... hurts my brain. <laughs> All right. Um, and then just talking about a little, uh, talking a little bit about like what is still left to come this preseason too is some more signings. Kurt Schmidt today yes. also said that the number 10 is very close. Um, and so they hope to have that announcement here within the next couple of uh, next couple of weeks. You don't think it's a hummus, do you? Cause I don't, I don't believe it's hummus. I, that's not uh <laughs> don't get me wrong. I feel like I've said that a lot this episode, but uh, as cool as that signing would be, that guy is like Luis Suarez level hurt every year i don't think it would be smart i don't think so either um just mostly when he's healthy it'd be sick but you know mostly because like if you bring hamas rodriguez in you're looking at dp level money yeah big big money i don't think i don't think his injury history alone makes him i don't think it affords it yeah i really don't makes him worth that if Um, if like hugo laurie can come as a just the normal player at 350 I'd yeah. take comments but <laughs> I, I feel like us paying him whatever his his wages right now would just kind of be silly I hate saying that because I want to see it happen but you know being a realistic RSL fan it, it would be shocking if that came through plus he's 32 and it doesn't fit anything of what Pablo has said over the course right. of the last few weeks it doesn't fit what Kurt Schmidt said today about the type of player 
that they're looking for. They 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 they're harping in on young. They're harping young. in on uh, just a guy who who can really really come in and contribute. And I don't think while I don't disagree that Hamas can't come in and contribute, I don't think that he would be healthy enough to be consistent. Right. Not not the yeah. That's just not what we need. I got league sources. I got league sources. Who league say sources? League sources. Oh. People people who are familiar with the situation and they say that it's all air. Yeah, I figured. There is no there's nothing going on there. And we'll we'll let that rest there. What else have your league sources said, Alex? <laughs> that's it. That's that's all I've heard. Oh man. Yeah, Didn't get any uh, anything else about another guy that maybe also lives in Europe currently that could play ten? Uh, that's what not... we'll leave that at. We'll leave that at that. <laughs> I haven't heard anything about about that. Um, there was another it... rumor I saw on Transfer Market about Yuki Kobayashi coming to RSL. Is that the center back? Yeah, for Celtic. Interesting. I think it's bullshizzle, um, but you know, a rumor, a rumor, as much, right? Rumors, rumors are rumors, and I think rumors, rumors are, are fun. Make, yeah, they they will make silly season fun. Without rumors, there would be no fun in silly season. Yeah. Oh well, but that's actually a signing I wouldn't hate. He's a decent center back, so I don't, I don't know if RSL is going for center backs anymore now that Katranis is in though. I know, but I really am willing, trying to will into existence because I don't trust our center backs. Let's come back to this conversation in June and see how we're feeling. Got it. I'll because book I have a one. feeling we're going to go, I wish we would have signed Yuki Kobayashi from Celtic. We could really use a center back right now. Any other, I don't think, I don't think any other rumors have come out besides those two, right? No, no, no. Um, but do expect a 10 soon. They did release Hamas out of his contract today. Wow. So, I mean, at least there wouldn't be a transfer fee. Sao Paulo released him earlier this morning per Jeez. sources, Colombian sources, um, reporters in Colombia. And so now he is at a contract. I mean, that makes it a little more likely, but I don't expect it to happen. I still don't expect it either just because of what I've been told and – Again, what we were saying earlier with it's not worth DP money to bring Thomas no, Rodriguez in. But maybe he's like, you know, I'm kind of towards the end of my career. I'll settle for 300K. Hopefully. Just, yeah, he won't. He's I'll take fine. him. I'll take him that way. But, but um, also, like, with his history at clubs, like injuries, you know, not even talking about injuries, but he seems to have a terrible attitude. Uh, he's never really stuck around anywhere, like, since that World Cup he had. So, I, I mean, is he really worth it? Well, that's why Sao Paulo released him this morning. Right. He's, is because, because it wasn't injuries this time. It was the attitude. He did. He yeah. was unhappy there. He made it very clear. He would – this is according to the head coach of Sao Paulo. Um, he would say he's injured, not train for two to four days – or three to four days, and then expect to have a spot on the team. Right. Does it sound like someone that just left? It sounds like someone – I don't necessarily know if – or still want to bring in. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Let's yeah. we need a team guy. Exactly. So two weeks. The more you talk to me about it, the more I want out. So don't <laughs> find it. <laughs> two weeks left of preseason um before Arsenal heads out to Miami. They're the, keep an eye on like what's going on around the league because there's been a lot of interesting moves everywhere. Today mm-hmm. Kellen Acosta joined Chicago, Chicago, which I thought was crazy. Um, I'm glad he didn't go back to Colorado. Good for Chicago. Because they need to get stronger. <laughs> they so the what Bogart was saying was that there was conversations with Kellen by Colorado before he picked Chicago, um, but they couldn't meet on a wage, and so that's why they decided to go get that guy from France um, instead of Kellen Acosta. Good, happy about it. Chicago's or Chicago, yeah, Chicago's looking good. They just signed a striker on paper. They just uh, signed you know, a striker. They they're bringing in Kellen Acosta, who I think is one of the better midfielders in this league. I'm I'm happy for Chicago. They're yeah, I'm happy moves. for him too. But like they also brought back Frank Frank Kropus, so 
<laughs> I mean, they brought in Shakiri, right? Nothing really changed for him. It's like Chicago's kind of one of those. We'll see if they ever really dig themselves out of this weird hole they've they put themselves in. Um. Yeah, keep an eye on what's going on around the league. There's going to be more transfers. There's going to be more signings going around. Um, so that way we can get ready for the 2024 season. Yes, sir. For some teams that started tonight, um, as in Vancouver, playing against Tigres in the championship. Is it cup now? CONCACAF Champions Cup? Sure. One of the, <laughs> one of those competitions that... We can't really keep up with unless, uh, you know, we're involved. So, CONCACAF Champions Cup back in full swing. Monterey won yesterday. Um, Club America lost, which was kind of surprising. Uh, and so, yeah, keep an eye on, too, on these international competitions as they get full swing. MLS is back, bro, and I'm excited. Let's let's go. Yeah, I'm actually uh, – I'm going to try to tune in tonight. I want to see Demir. <laughs> as painful as it's going to be. I want to see him <laughs> So – um, anything else you want to cover, man? I think that's really, I think, I think, I think that's really it to really get some, you know, some info coming in. So hopefully nice short, sweet episode. Yeah. Hopefully they are able to stream. Um, we can find a stream for Fridays, uh, friendly. If we do, obviously we'll share it. So that way everybody can tune in and take a look and see yep. RSL. Um, but besides that, I think that'll do it. Absolutely. Uh, everyone have a good week. Good weekend, and we'll we'll chat next week. We'll be back next week with Andy. Um, so yeah, make sure to stick with us, and make sure to follow us on Instagram. Go follow us on X, Twitter. Go subscribe to our YouTube. We're trying to post more stuff on our YouTube as far as availability, as far as content goes, so that way you guys can keep up with the latest and the greatest RSL news. Um, thanks for listening to the RSL Show here on the KSL Sports Network. Yeah.